Hey guys, next Tuesday, I'll be doing a Q&A episode on this channel. So if you're watching this within the first 48 hours of it being published and you've got a question for that episode, let me know in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer it next Tuesday. Let's dive into today's episode. Yes, guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're doing really well. This is the Sunday show where I take you through nine of my very best sold sales items on eBay and Facebook Marketplace. If you're here for the first time, I put out three new videos on this YouTube channel every single week talking about how to make money on eBay and Facebook Marketplace. I'm a full-time reseller, it's what I do, and I have a lot of fun doing it. So hit the subscribe button, it'd be great to have you a part of the journey, and uh, hit the like button as well. It only takes two seconds, but it has a massive impact on the channel, so I can't thank you enough for that. I've got a really good featured reseller of the week for you, and I'm also gonna take you through the weekly sales numbers. So let's kick things off with the first item that was actually picked out of a recent trip to the thrift episode, and it was purchased by a YouTube subscriber as well. So let's get into it. All right, guys, so first item up was this 2020 Toyota AFL Grand Final hat that I found in last Thursday's trip to the thrift episode. Now, I've only paid $4 for this, but I knew the minute that I saw it on the rack that it was going to be a very, very rare item, a 2020 Toyota AFL Grand Final at the Gabba. It's never been played at the Gabba before, so there was gonna be some historical value to this item. It was our National Football League competition, basically, for those outside of Australia. Now, I bought this before, and the comps were telling me that it was worth about $120, $100 or so on eBay, but it was actually, like I mentioned, a YouTube subscriber, Alicia Gibson, that has ended up purchasing this one through my Instagram account. Now, I don't do these videos, Trip to the Thrifts, to sell directly to you guys, but it has started to happen a little bit more, and Alicia, I'm really happy and thankful that you've been able to purchase this one from me. This one has ended up selling for $75. So an awesome result. I've given a bit of discount there, as I'll always do for anybody purchasing on this channel. Um, take out the postage costs. There were no fees because it was done directly through Instagram. Uh, the profit there for me was $67.44, selling in the space of just three days to Alicia over there in WA. So thank you very much, Alicia. The hat will be sent out to you first thing on Monday. Um, enjoy it. And uh, thank you very much for the support of the channel. Another trip to the thrift episode sale, guys. If you were watching that one two weeks ago, you would have seen that I picked up this Del Toro Quest book series. Now, this is a bit of a bolo book brand uh, or book uh, series to get your hands on. I've been able to find eight books, which was a complete series, books one to eight of the Del Toro Quest series. Now, I've only paid a dollar each for these, so I'm only $8 in, and the comps while I was in the op shop was really good for this one. Now, I've ended up selling it for the full price of $54.95 for these eight books. Uh, the postage ended up being $12.15. The fees were $7. I did sell it through on eBay. And the profit that I got at the end of this one was $27.66 for just a set of eight books in an op shop. So an eight day sales cycle. This is a Bolo uh, book uh, brand to get your hands on. If you can find this author, find this series, books one to eight, it goes on to sell pretty regularly in a pretty fast space of time on eBay around about that $55 price point. Now, guys, I probably don't put enough sort of bread and butter items that I would regularly sell that doesn't make a hell of a lot of profit, but it's just a consistent seller for me. I've got one here for you today. I figured I'd put a few more of these in to try and help you guys with those bread and butter type items. Uh, the FJ uh, Golf uh, Polo Shirt. So Footjoy is the brand, FJ is the symbol, and uh, this one goes on to sell very fast. I do love picking up this brand. Uh, the material of these Golf Polo Shirts, they always sort of hold the test of time. They never really get too damaged. Um, so they're always in pretty good condition when you go on to resell them. Now, I thought this was a really nice pattern, really nice color, uh, thought it would go on to sell well, and it certainly did. I only paid $4 in the thrift for this one, and it sold for $34.99. That's a pretty common price for this golf brand, Footjoy FJ. So $34.99 postage fees, I've profited $18.89. And if you're a regular viewer of this channel, you're probably bored of me saying that if I can make about 20 bucks for a single item of clothing, I'm generally pretty happy. So um, 10 day sales cycle, a very quick turnaround on this one, Footjoy FJ, look out for it, you can make some money. I'm gonna randomly jump into my first and only piece of furniture that I was able to sell this week as well, guys. But this was a little beauty, so I'll whack it in now for you. It was this entertainment unit that I picked up off Facebook Marketplace. Now, I paid up a little bit for this one, guys. You know, watching this video, that I'm always around $50 for a purchase price. Well, I've ended up paying 70 for this one. Couldn't get her down, tried to go 50, she said no. But this was just such a nice piece of furniture that I thought that I could sell it for over $150. So I thought it was definitely worth my while, even at the $70 purchase price. Had some really nice timber 
the slats as you can see there on the door. It was in incredible condition as well. All the drawers worked fine. There was nothing wrong with this. And look, to be honest, this item of furniture would probably go retail for about 12, 13, maybe $1,400. Um, so to have it for just $70, there was gonna be money. Um, now I've ended up selling it in the space of seven days. It did take a week to sell. We've had a lot of rain around the area. And I think that's a bit of an issue when it comes to Facebook Marketplace. If you get a few days of rain, sales tend to fall away on Marketplace. But this one has ended up selling for $200. And I did deliver it just around the corner. It didn't take too long. And uh, I've profited $130. So once again, you make about 100 bucks each time when you flip furniture. Certainly, at least I do anyway. You just got to make sure that you're buying the item that fits the area that you're in. Something that's a bit trendy to your local area. And you only sort of learn that through experience of just trying and buying and seeing how it goes. So give furniture a go because it's just such a large uh, profit item to get into. Another trip to the thrift sale here, guys. I'll whack it up for you now. It was the Mambo shirt. Now, this was very cool. Probably actually didn't realize, to be honest, I'm a bit inexperienced on the Mambo brand and I probably should pay a bit more attention to it. Uh, I found this button-up shirt, short sleeve button-up shirt. It was a 3XL, a slightly larger size, but have a look at the print. The print was just epic. I knew this one was going on to sell well. There was a comp on eBay that had a best offer at $140. So I've ended up going at $100 on this one and I ended up taking an offer. So 12 day sales cycle, it sold for $89. I probably could have got a couple more dollars for it, no doubt about it, but I only paid five bucks for it. So when the offer came in at 89, I thought, why not take the money and run, reinvest it into a few more Mambo shirts. So take out your postage, take out your fees. I've profited basically $65 on this single button up shirt, short sleeve Mambo shirt that I found in the thrift for just five bucks. Amazing, the sort of profit you can make out of the thrift. Now, speaking of a really good profit, guys, this is an item. I'm selling a lot of shoes. I just Shoes are probably the favorite thing to sell, like the favorite thing to source for me. You guys are talking a lot in my comments around the fact that I'm able to get really good quality shoes for a really low price in my thrift stores. And I don't thrift anywhere else, so I'm not to know what it's like for you guys out there. So I am very fortunate that I can pick up these sort of shoes. I've got the Nike Zoom here. Now, guys, I've paid $3.50 for these Nike Zoom shoes, and they were basically in like new condition, and the comps were around the $70 to $80 price point on eBay. So look, when you're buying shoes like this for $3.50, you're gonna be making a heap of money. You've just obviously gotta be able to find it. Um, even if you're purchasing it around the $10 price point, that's not too bad either. But look, this has gone on to sell for $69.97. So postage fees, I've ended up profiting basically $50 for a pair of running shoes, which on eBay, when you're taking fees and everything into consideration, I think 50 profit for a pair of shoes is madness. Um, so I'm super stoked to get this result. Um, 25 day sales cycle for a very good pair of Nike shoes. It's probably my most favorite item to sell. Have a look at this one, guys. Now, this is the Stargate board game, SG1, fully uh, packaged up as well. This is brand new factory sealed, and I only paid $5 for it in a local thrift store uh, 99 days ago. This had a long sales cycle. What I will quickly say around this, I put out a video recently around six daily habits that I do on my eBay store every single day, and that is the end relist. Well, this sold as a result of the end relist strategy that I've recently been talking about, and I was very fortunate to have now got into that process of doing it because I actually dropped the price on this one down to $119.99. I had it originally for $129.99 um, and it sold for full price. So I got the $120 sale price after dropping it on a relist. The postage was $10. The fees was $15.60. I've profited $89.26. Now, I will say when you're out in the thrift, if you can find board games that are brand new and sealed, I think they're the best ones to buy. If you can buy um, board games that are secondhand, you're always running the risk that there might be a piece or two missing out of the game, especially if you're buying puzzles or things like that. But certainly when it comes to board games, factory sealed and something that's a little bit rare that comps quite well is always worth getting your hands on. All right, guys, this next one, I will quickly say to you that I have absolutely no idea what the hell it is. It was a twin tuner. I've, I've got this twin tuner uh, 147 days ago off Facebook Marketplace. It was a bundle haul of electronics that she was getting rid of for free. Um, I've spoken about a few that have sold recently uh, in the past, but 147 day sales cycle. This was the last item that I had on my eBay store. And it's ended up, like I said, I don't know what it is. It's a twin tuner. You guys let me know in the comments what a twin 
tuna actually does because I really don't know. But it sold for $120 on eBay. Now, you might be saying, well, how did you know what to price it at? Well, I've just gone off the comps. I've searched for the item code and I've done the comp on eBay and it told me that it was around 100, 100 to $150, somewhere in that vicinity. So sure enough, it's it's sold for the $120. Um, take out your fees and postage. I profited $86 on this item. And I think at the end of the day, the five or six items that I had out of that Facebook Marketplace pickup for free has gone on to profit me around about the $500 price point. So there is a lot of money on Facebook Marketplace sourcing, no doubt about it. I think there's a real space for hard goods like electronics as well. You've obviously got to test them and make sure that they work. But $86, you don't always need to know about the products that you're selling. Now guys, I've been a full-time reseller since the 1st of September last year, and I was probably only casual for a few months before that, to be honest. Coronavirus basically forced me into being a full-time reseller a little bit sooner rather than later, but I am very excited over the next few months to be diving into the winter gear. Um, it's not something that I've really dealt in last year because I wasn't doing it at a full-time capacity, so I am starting to source winter clothing right now, and I've been able to find this Matterhorn uh, puffer jacket in the thrift, again, for just $3. I've got some very cheap cheap op shops around the corner from me. Uh, but this Matterhorn brand was actually not a very well-known brand. There weren't a lot of comps on eBay for it. Let me know in the comments if you know about this Matterhorn brand, but I believe it is European. Um, but regardless, it was a very nice warm puffer jacket um, and I've gone ahead and sold it for $56 on a best offer. So what I'm really excited about for winter is the fact that I think I can sell these winter items for a little bit higher than summer clothing items. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to finding higher price points like this one at $56. Take out fees and postage. I've been able to profit $35.59 in a 77 day sales cycle. Guys, let me know in the comments below of the winter clothing items, what have been the best sellers for you over the years. I'd love to know it because I really want to start sourcing these winter items and I want to know what is the best winter items to get my hands on. So they were my nine best sold sales items of the week, guys. Hopefully you got some value out of those. Whack them on your bolo list and go and find them in the thrift because they certainly are selling for me on eBay. We're going to dive into our featured reseller of the week now. And this week it goes to Andrew from Tokyo Thrifts on Instagram. I'll whack his page up here for you to have a look at, but go and give him a follow on Instagram. He began his reselling journey at the beginning of the year going out into the thrift stores and I've been following him ever since. And he is getting some incredible sales come through. And we do have one, if I scoot across here and put it up for you, he's been able to sell this Pikmin 2 Nintendo Wii game. And look, it was factory sealed. He said that he bought it in a thrift store for 50 cents and uh, he's gone ahead and sold it as you can see there for $98.95, so basically $100 there on eBay for this factory sealed game. And the best part about it, I think for me, and the reason why I wanted to have a chat about it today, is that while he is a relatively new and inexperienced reseller, he's only just starting out, he's been able to do international shipping, which is something that I've personally not really spent the time to look into, yet he's gone ahead and he sold it to somebody in Australia. So he's sending this one off uh, to someone locally here in Australia, and he's really got me in the mindset of really starting to focus on my international shipping a bit more. I think I'm shooting myself the foot by not putting in the time to look into it and to learn it, um, but he certainly has. So Andrew, I thought I'd uh, put you down as our featured reseller of the week this week. Go and give him a follow on his Instagram page and follow the journey because he's, he's grabbing some awesome stuff and he puts up some really good stories as well. So give him a follow. Well done, Andrew. You're our featured reseller of the week. All right, guys, let's have a look at the weekly sales numbers just to let you know how I've gone this week. We'll pull the table up here and I'll take you through the numbers. Uh, we're looking at March 22 to 28. So I've been able to sell 34 items this week, which is a little bit less if you've been watching over the last few weeks. I've had a pretty good run over the last three weeks. So this one has dropped off just slightly. Cost of goods, $215.32 uh, has resulted in total sales of $1,343. So guys, I have profited $1,127 this week. A monster profit margin there of 84%. It was a lot of thrifted goods bought at a very low price, sold at a relatively high price. And obviously the grid down there will tell you that my total sales of 1,300 doesn't include the postage charges that the buyer has also paid. So you can add that on top for a total revenue perspective. Um, fees, 15% as well. They aren't taken into account. So while the postage goes on top, I do need to take off 15% as well. But just for a bit of a gauge there, guys, that's why I like to give you those numbers. Total sales, 1,343 for this week. So look, 
It has been a relatively quieter week, I guess. I've been only doing five average sales a day. Last week, if you were watching that episode, I was doing eight sales a day last week. So it has dropped off a little bit, but I'm still really happy to profit anywhere over $1,000 is still a pretty good week for me at this stage. So look, this month of March has been really, really good. And I'm very excited to bring you those numbers at the end of the month, like I always do with the monthly review. Um, a lot of great insights that I'll, I'll be able to share with you then. But for this week and this week alone, I, I would say if you haven't watched the six daily habits video that I put out on Tuesday, I'm doing those practices every single day and they are helping me bring in these sales numbers. So I'll whack up somewhere here uh, that link so you can go and check it out if you haven't watched it yet already. But those, those six um, habits that I'm doing have really helped me and really there's nothing else to it. You've just got to remain consistent and put the best practices in place. So I will say on top of all of that, my sourcing has been a little bit low this, uh, this month. I'm, I'm probably about 100 items less to where I'm normally at at this stage. So to end the month, we've only got a couple of days left. I'm going to go out and source quite heavily and buy quite a number of items over the next few days. So fingers crossed there's a really good trip to the thrift coming on Thursday. And then the other one as well is the important of managing your store guys let me know in the comments do you regularly go back and look at old items do you touch them up do you take photos do you reprice do you do the end relist strategy I've really started to realize that as much as it's great to buy really good quality items and put new items into your store, what's happening to the old items? What are, you, what are you doing about it? Because you really should be manipulating that. The Stargate board game, for example, that was 100, and, 100 days ago. It was a long time ago. And I, to be honest, I'd forgotten I even had it. But it was when I did the end relist strategy that I was able to manipulate the price point. And sure enough, within the space of a few hours, it sells. So managing your store as much as you're putting quality items into your store is another thing that I've probably learned this week. So hopefully you've got some value out of the episode, guys. That's everything for me. Um, really appreciate you tuning in this one. Like I said, right at the beginning of the episode, let me know in the comments below if you've got any questions at all regarding myself personally. I'm an open book on Tuesday's episode for a Q&A. So look forward to catching you in that episode. Should be a fun one. We'll see you then.